Um. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. <laughs> yeah, we're doing um, uh, Title Tuesday, a bit of Blitz. I haven't played any Blitz for ages, and there's a big event happening this Saturday. Uh, the big event, I say it's a big event. This is quite a big event. We got Title Tuesday uh happening today but we got the bum ratty tournament on saturday um captain bum ratty in the chat is um basically uh running that one helping run that one and uh yeah i mean uh i'm i'm gonna get my excuses in now but uh yeah a little bit tired but it should be fun i'm just gonna have a bit of a fun today and i've got a beer look at that a see-through beer even better so um we're gonna, I haven't played this for ages, and I do love playing Title Tuesday generally, except when I play horribly, and then I hate it. Um, so we're gonna see, can, can, how can I do today? Well, I, I'm gonna try out um, the repertoire from above, which I just released, we just released yesterday, I think, or today, and it's the Grandmaster Gambit's repertoire, um, that I, I, you must know I've been talking about this before, and it's based on E4. So I'm going to be I'm going to be trying out this now. I hope I can remember it. I wanted to go over the lines one more time, because even when you make a course, I mean, obviously I remember most of the things. You, you still you still like you know uh, you need to really get in the right mood to get everything in blitz game particularly. But the best way to learn something, a course, I would say once you've done the course, so once you've brought a course, whatever it would be. Let's say it's the one above, you look at the videos, you do the move trainer. I haven't done the move trainer, but I, I've prepared the course and it's a lot of the gambit lines is stuff I've been playing for like decades. But the way to really try it out is by playing it. You want to go and play blitz games in it uh, and see how much you remember. Then if you get in trouble in any of the games, you go and check those, those lines with it. So we're going to see, we're going to give it a whirl. We're going to give the gambit lines from this course a whirl. Uh, <laughs> let's see how it gets on. We're going to try a rock and roll with um, with E4 in, in, in positions. So we're going to have a little bit of fun. We're just going to have some fun, right? Thank you, Gepetto, for subscribing. Very kind. Cheers. 25 months, eh? 25 months. That's that's good work, sir. Good work. So who's playing today? Who is playing today? Well, let, let's have a look. Just let me get up the list of participants. Oh, I'm started. Let's not do that because my game has started. Okay. Now, wish me luck. We're off. We're off with game one. And I do recommend the wing gambit as my first recommendation in Grandmaster Gambits. And I'm already... E5 is one of the lines. I've now got to remind myself. This is the, pretty sure the line I give where you pressurize this one. And we're going for lots of fun, gambity, exciting games today. So, uh, well, I'm, I'm trying to follow the Grandmaster Gambit's course that I've just finished filming. So we're trying to follow the lines in that one and get an exciting game. So obviously we sacked Pawn here, but that's all part of this course. And I'm now thinking about just trying to play this one and open up the position somewhat and go go with some quick development so maybe i take here i try to get my bishop in the game we castle quickly and this is what the course is all about it's all about that quick development now against this i feel like i should be flicking in a check because if the bishop goes there we can capture and we can make the queen move so there's no threat down here and i'm also ready to castle so quick gambits today, boys and girls. And my first game is always always a bit shaky, right? My first game is always like, ooh, you know, I, I always play, you know, I need to, I, I often need to get into it a little bit, but I've got beer, I've got beer. Whew, that's gonna help me. What can we score today, I wonder? I wonder what we can score today. Okay, so now we can just take here, I think. And we're winning our pawn back, but more, more importantly, my opponent my opponent's kingside is in a lot of trouble i'm just going to castle and i think i'm going to castle here i'm not i'm not too worried about uh, such a pawn this is a, this is a gambit course boys and girls and like i say it's a really it was one of the most fun courses i've ever made because 
it was coming up with really imaginative, crazy gambit ideas. And I love, I love, I love gambiting. I've always been a, an aggressive gambiteer. And then backing that up with computer research, and some of it's quite complex, but it was really fun looking at gambits like this, the wing gambit, and, and making them work. And we certainly did that. Okay. Now, I don't really want to exchange queens, but there might not be any option. I'm, I'm thinking of this one, actually, uh, which may well be a good move. Now, if I take the bishop, I go d7, but I'm sacrificing a lot, right? Now, taking the queen is fine, and then rook a4, and my opponent's knight's actually in trouble. I remember that being a common idea, but also queen d4, very interesting. You can see... Well, we're out of the theory now. Maybe queen d4 is best, right? Because I attack the knight. And we avoid the exchange of queens. Should we go for that one? Fascinating position, this one. I mean, the thing is, I think I must be doing very well here because I'm castled and my opponent's not. And look at my opponent's weak king. Again, this is what we're trying to do today. We're trying to go for crazy gambits. Okay, so my opponent desperate to get the queens off the board. And now I can take here with a good position but again I, I'm not in a, I'm not really in a rush to get these queens off queen d2 keep the queens on the board looks looks like the most fun we keep them on the board maybe we've got a rook coming to c1 or a rook to d1 as well and my opponent can't go queen c2 now because I take on b4 I've got to watch my time a little bit uh, in this position Rick next says I brought 11 of your courses well thank you mate Basically, buying my courses is what keeps me going uh, as a chess professional. That's like my income, you know, making courses to the highest level possible and hoping people will buy them. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm not, I wouldn't be here streaming. Sainsbury's will be calling me up or I'll be calling them up, maybe. I don't think Sainsbury's call cool people. So this looks fun. This looks like all right, right? I mean, like we've got the knight coming in. Okay, so now I could go rook here. Many options. I could go if rook here my opponent could take here the thing is I always get I, the problem with me I get so carried away in these positions because I find them so interesting and I'm like yeah that's interesting oh that's in, you know there's so many interesting ideas I, I will just play this one for now and my opponent actually just playing a good move there that's a bit annoying uh, when I might have put my pieces on quite funny squares but I've got e6 and I love, I mean, I love messy games. I love complex, messy games. And that's what we're going for now. So we're going for G7. And uh, it looks like fun, doesn't it? Okay, so now my opponent maybe has to play this move. So do we just come in and develop straight into this square? But my opponent is going to get castled, which is a little bit annoying. I've got loads of play. But it's a bit annoying that she's going to castle. So what if I played this first? Keep this threat in the air. Okay. And now I want to get rid of this knight because I want this one to come in. But I, I don't. I want to play knight here to stop my opponent castling, and I don't want to exchange queen. So I've managed now to get my knight in. And the whole idea is to stop castling because I take that one. Uh, and I've got ideas with a rook now coming in as well. Uh, and this is the whole point. We, we stop our opponent castling. And there we go. Whew, interesting. Thank you for the game. Um, from Bulgaria. Some of I was playing, a woman FM. Interesting. That was fun. That was a little bit of fun. That's the kind of that's the kind of see we're going to enjoy it today. Thank you for the game, Nadia. We're going to have a we're going to have a fun day with these gambits. You can't go wrong. And, and again, that's one of the main ideas of this course was to create some fun. You know, I mean, like the English course I did, I think it's great. It's but it's very serious. And, and you know, we all want to play a gambit now and again, especially when we're playing blitz, right? So that's that's what we're going to do. Now, what am I going to play with the black pieces? I'm going to stick to the Dutch defense. And I don't know what I'm going to play against e4. Maybe I'll play my e5 repertoire there. Mm. There is an increment. Um, I don't know what time control is. Uh, it's three minutes plus. I think you get one second of move. Um, 
Thank you, Captain Bumratty, for the good luck there. Um, Gepetto, one of the first people to subscribe to the channel, saying those chess-based videos are great. Yeah, to be honest, um, I mean, I, I, my first videos I did were for Ginger Gem, my company, and the advantage of them is they're digital downloadable. And then I did chess-based ones, and very happy with them. But I just find chess, the chessable ones, I know they're more expensive, but I find them to actually be, be the best products, apart from my Ginger Gem ones, maybe, because the reason I did this for Chessable rather than for Ginger Gem is I was going to release this course, a, grand, a Gambit's course on Ginger Gem, but then the more I studied it, and I got Richard Palliser to help me. Richard Palliser is like one of the best opening theoreticians ever, so he, he came up with a lot of the opening ideas. He's been second to Gwen Jones, and he's always been involved with openings in chess, so he helped with the openings for the course. And I found that so, some of the lines are actually so tactical I thought, look, it'd be really good if you guys who are spending your hard-earned money could uh, could basically train these lines. And I thought, well, Chessable's perfect, right? Because they've got the they've got the training feature. You learn through the videos, and then the videos are good for me explaining the general ideas. But then you get to uh, then you get to um, actually uh, uh, test out what you've known with the move trainer. So that's why I decided to do it for Chessable. I thought that 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 would work best. Give give the best product, and we always want to give the best product. Thank you for the cheer out there, uh, Harry R. Uh, yeah, that was a fun game, right? It was a fun game. I mean, this this wing gambit, this wing gambit is is very very interesting. I couldn't. I, I, I mean, it's totally sound in, in in as well. I think totally sound. The Icelandic gambit when facing, I think that's against E4. The problem is when you're black, it's a lot harder to gambit. Uh, a lot harder to gambit. Now this course is, is is expensive. I mean, I'm not going to deny it. It's on sale at the moment, but it's over like 100 pounds. So it's really expensive. But uh, the reason for that is, if you look at the hours, it turned out being seven, 20, 27 hours of tuition, which is which is a lot. You've got 27 hours of me. And I recommend you to put a month away, <laughs> you know, while lockdown's still going on and try to do like an hour a day to learn a really fun opening. But it, it's, it's 27 hours of me, Richard Palliser, has spent hundreds of hours creating it, me as well. So it's over a hundred pounds, but you do get all the assets for that. And you know, if you want to get good at chess, if you're going to get a grandmaster coach, they're like between, they're like hundred pounds an hour often. So it's like, you know, you pay for what you get. You get a very good course. That's that's what you get. Uh, yeah, the Tau DVD was fun, right? Um, Gepetto, it was, I really enjoyed that. I'd like to do that one again. We've been trying to make it work in a different feature. Uh, da, 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 da. Ricky Check saying the streaming function is not working on Ginger Gem. Well, if you give me an, give me an email and include in my address, they should get back to you. There's only two of us, right? There's only two of us, really. But if you include me in on the email, I'll, I'll make sure we have a look at it. It should be working. It's working for everyone else, so we can help you fix that one. Uh, you've been playing the sniper, have you, Gepetto? Yeah, well, Charlie Story is a real character. Charlie Story is a real character, and I, I, I like Charlie a lot. And um, yeah, the, the the play like Tower was great. I'm trying to work out how to do a, a play like Tower, but without the physical DVD. So that's what I'm trying. We're trying to work out at the moment. So you can have an interactive kind of video thing, but without a physical DVD. So these things take a lot of time and and a lot of money to create. So. We haven't got enough money to create it at the moment, unfortunately. Um, so yeah, so I played B4. This is my main recommendation in the Grandmaster Gambit. So I think it's totally cool. And um, my opponent played one of the main lines. D5 is a main move. E5 is a main move. And taking on A3 is a main move. Uh, and the idea of this is we get a very big center and we often get play along the open files. Uh, and in the case in this game, okay, well, let, let's let's move on. Now, whenever I'm playing a young Norwegian, I always get a little bit worried. And I expect this is a young Norwegian because I've lost to so many young Norwegians in my lifetime. So what are we going to do? I think we're going to go for a, a French defense because I know it the best. Because um, I've been playing it for like 30 years and, and I want to try as much as I can to keep it 
reasonably solid actually as black. We're going crazy as white and we're going solid as black. Now this is a move that was actually played by Mikhail Tau. And just trying to remember the theory, that's not supposed to be the best move. Why though? Because I Oh, maybe this, yeah, this is following a famous Macau Tao game actually, where white won. And I actually think this variation that my opponents played is actually very underrated. It's a very underrated line, and I'm trying to remember my theory now. It's one of those ones where if you forget your theory, and my opponent is looking like he remembers his theory, you can get in trouble. Now, this one. And the king comes in. This is following that Tau game in actual fact. But I'm going to risk it. And this is still theory. And this is this is actually following the Tau game. And this is still following the Mikhail Tau game. And the funny thing is here, um, white has a lot of compensation because of the king coming in. So I would rather have not gone into this actually. Um... But what can we do? Let's. I'm a pawn up, but my opponent has these great dark squares. And this is something I, I've been tempted to play this line as white. I know we're straight into an ending. Um, and I actually recommended this on my last Accelerate Your Chess. Tau versus. It might have been Timon. In my last Accelerated Chess, I looked at this position, which white ended up winning. And I suggested this as a way for white to play. Now, I'm trying to remember what I suggested. That's that's the thing. So I'm gonna put the bishop there. I was thinking, whoa, what the hell happened there? That wasn't cool. Okay, is that right? Let's go back to the big board. Maybe I could have gone rook d8 there and king here and then king here. Now, I'm actually thinking, I. My opponent can probably just take this one. Maybe I'm just bluffing, right? I'm not sure. I go check. King e5. I hope he's not listening to the stream. Maybe he loses a rook with d5. I'd much prefer to be the one with the initiative in these positions, so I'm a little bit uncomfortable with, with this opening, I have to admit. If I lose a pawn, then I really don't like my position. My one advantage is the extra pawn, but I'm wondering what else I could have played there instead of this move. Okay, so he has taken it, which is the move I was scared about. And now there's some interesting possibilities because his rook is attacked. Now I wanted to play d4, that was my main idea, but then I saw this bishop c4 move and I think I'm in a lot of trouble there. So I don't like this position. And this one, he goes rook here. So it's a little bit uncomfortable, this. I really want to play d4, but I can't get it to play. Now, I'm going to just play here, but I'm not sure about this either. Putting another pawn on a light square is really bad. It's funny, when you pick an opening, and you automatically regret it, because they go into one line. And this line my opponent played, it's, it's a very decent line. I've recommended this to a lot of friends of mine to play but I obviously haven't found a very good solution to the issues here now okay I'm gonna I'm gonna try I need to play quicker anyway my opponent playing very well actually if he finds the next move yeah this move this is a really good move I'm trying to push his pieces back as far as I can. But I'm probably now going a pawn down. Okay, do I grab this one? I guess so. But I'm obviously worried about the check. But it's either that or be a pawn down. So I think this is my best chance. 
And now, luckily, my one my one thing here is that I do do have an extra pawn. Yeah, this is all in the accelerate your chess course that I've done. I, uh, this whole ending I looked at, but I look at it from the white side. <laughs> okay, now he should have he should have given me a check, but the way the way he's playing this is also not stupid. I'm going to speed up now. Very slow. It feels like I haven't been playing slowly, but I'm still. The position should be alright for me now. Should be okay, but. Well, if I win that pawn, it's it's certainly okay. I managed to get out of the the main problems that I had, but it's it's kind of on the time, right? Now I do have some okay. Now this one I'm hoping is a strong move. Where do we put the bishop? Do we actually even put it back here? A little bit peculiar square. Because I mean, I'm better, but. With correct play, this is this is a draw. I'm kind of regretting putting my bishop there because it might get trapped. So I'm just putting it somewhere where it's protected, and it won't get in trouble. All the, all the way over here. And now I want to try and do a little bit of centralization with my pieces. Okay. Well, I'm happy the rooks have come off. I'm very happy. This is probably a drawn. Well, I don't know if this is this. It's probably drawn, but I'm sure we can make my opponent work for it. This position. It, I mean, how easy is this? How easy is this to draw? I'm going to try to activate my king. I don't want to swap off any pawns yet. Well, we can see my opponent's plan. How do we now win? Is there any way to win this? Maybe there's just no way to win this as my opponent is showing. He's got the perfect position. Maybe I have to go for this. Ah. How do we even try to win this one? If he just moves his bishop around. I don't know how I try to win this one. Because I can never, there's absolutely no way I can win, is there? This is really annoying. I thought I have at least a plan to win, but I, I, I can't. Can't do anything. Time as well. I've got to watch that one. Shit. How do I? <laughs> okay. Well. have one more idea but this is going to be a draw upsetting I should have pushed more in this ending this is the only other idea and now some chances especially as I Pawn is going quickly. I might be winning. Oh, oh there. That was that was tough, right? That's my only winning try. Maybe maybe it wasn't so easy, yeah. My opponent played the king the wrong way in that ending, so that 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 was actually. Oh, oh. Ooh, that was that was tough. I don't think I don't think I robbed him. I think mean, that's unfair to say because, um, well, I think he got outplayed at the end to be entirely, probably, uh, entirely entirely correct. But uh, he could have defended better. But he didn't find a. When you're a pawn up, you've got to try everything you can. Yeah, um, and 
well, the only way I could win, because I can't do anything, is by playing for h4. This is the only winning idea. And I'm just wondering, actually, that when I get this to occur, okay, I danced around a lot first, and then the key point is when I play h4. Now, if he doesn't take, I take the pawn anyway. If he goes here, this one might be winning because my h pawn. So after king takes f4, the problem that white has, well, he needs to get his king back this way. If he gets his king back there, it's, it's a draw. So I think if he just plays this move, it's a draw because he, oh no, hang on a minute. So I go check, takes, takes, and now, now this is a winning king and pawn then because I get the opposition after after this one, yeah? This is winning for me. So maybe it is winning. Really bizarre. Maybe it's winning. This this king and pawn ending. And if you go here, I just go here. And we get the op we get this one again. So it's not not easy this. Not an easy ending. And the problem my opponent had is that I now take control of that square so my opponent's king can't get back into the drawing zone can't get back into the drawing zone okay so we're in with a tough game now we're playing a top grandmaster and we're going to try the gambit repertoire out again like i said i would i said i was going to go for e4 and follow my latest chessable course so let's see so we're having the wing gambit again this is all in the chessable course and so now he's taken it he's playing the main line here and you've got to watch out for queen e5 this is all the main line theory and one of the main ideas is to get my knight to b5 now there's two interesting ways to play there's c4 and there's just this simple move here and this is our main suggestion in the gambit course and the point of this idea is that we want to quickly come in here and play d4 this is this is what i explained in the videos so we're gonna we're gonna be giving this a go in in this is the one of the main lines in the whole course and i hope i bloody well remember it which i probably won't now <laughs> so now we're, well now we are coming here main line still one of the things is if he goes a6 we have the pin and and we want to combine this idea with d4 so in we go we have a big fret and the big fret is we we have a massive fork and now this move is key this move is blasting open the center of the board i actually had this in a game six years ago against grandmaster dragon uh, from poland in the london chess classic and actually this position is in is in the course and I think it's a very good position for white because of this move, which I played against Dragon. And we keep developing in, in true, uh, true aggressive style. And against Dragon, it went King F8 because this is, this is a threat. And then I went Bishop C4. Now Bishop C4 was risky and I'm trying to remember the pro the improved variation I can get a draw here by moving my my knight backwards or forwards but draws draws are for wimps right so I'm gonna stay with a dragon I'm gonna I know that in the course I give knight c7 which is a better move but I'm gonna try to play like I'm gonna I'm gonna try to make Morphe proud here and Well, would Morphe be proud of that move or absolutely, oh God, absolutely, absolutely. Okay, we're gonna castle. Again, I, I'm trying to play like Morphe. I'm getting everything developed. This is what the course is about. And the thing is, even I, even though I've done the course, because I've just looked at so many lines, you can see how many variations are there? There's 75,000 words. It's like a New Testament. And I even get confused, so I, I, I have to remember the, the key concepts as well when I'm playing these positions, rather than just relying on the theory. My memory's not as good as it used to be. And this seems like a very interesting position to me. Now I could just take back as well, but queen b3, 
Then knight a5 is, is interesting. Um, queen b3, knight a5. I'm just wondering if I sack that one. Yeah, of course we do. Of course we do. Let's play this. Now, maybe I should have probably gone for the main line I recommend because that's the computer suggestion, but this is obviously a lot of fun for someone. It might be, again, complete rubbish, but <laughs> it's a gambit course, boys and girls, and we're, we're not, we're not going to disappoint. Okay. Um... Right, time is not on my side. This is where I need more time uh, to think of the way through these complications. Now, if bishop e6, does that help me? Time, Simon, your time. I need a good follow up here. Is there a good follow up? <sighs> should be something but this is like such a critical position if I make a mistake here it could just be game over so this one maybe this looks really peculiar but let's give it a go threatening checkmate But this is the problem. Now I need to try and get into the position, but how do we do that? Time. Ah, oh, Simon, you're too slow. Way too slow, aren't I? Way too slow. Ah, uh, annoyed with this one. I'm gonna have to look at this one on a computer. Because uh, I'm just just played this too slowly. I mean, the position seemed very interesting to me, but I think this is lacking any full compensation now. I've still got a bit of compensation, but it's a lot of material, right? And that is going to be so much material. Don't really want to give that much up. Some comp. But is it enough comp? I don't know. I don't know. Doubtful. Yeah, it's, it's a problem. Uh, okay, well, I, I, I'm a bit disappointed that one because I, I think that was going perfectly and um, I just forgot I forgot my own own a little bit of my own analysis here in uh, So we will check that one. The problem is I like to check it on chess base now But I might get thrown out of the tournament if I like whack on chess base um, In this position and yeah, we can resign there. It's, it's, that's a loss. So That's annoying disappointing disappointing okay well let, let uh, let's have a look at that this is the way to improve even when you got the course look at where look at where you uh look at where you could have improved because at some point i'm doing absolutely fine there but i went i went a little bit over the top i feel a little bit over the top giving up so much material it was it was uh not brilliant and my opponent well look at him he got 97 percent, and if he's doing that against gambits it's going to be very strong so now here in this position, as you can see, we well, can't see because I haven't allowed that. Nothing wrong with the opening's fault. The opening has given me a good position. It was just not following it up in the best way. Because you can see after bishop f4, I have a nice advantage of like a pawn. Now I know here knight c7 is the move to play and I should have just gone with what I had in the course. Um, and I should have gone with this one because I know this is the main su suggestion 
and after this move they have to go here and you can just go back now and the best they've got is certainly a draw because if they play anything else they they are in trouble but in this position the theoretical move is knight takes here and you can see it's nearly a plus one advantage i should have gone for this but i had good memories of playing bishop c4 against another grandmaster and i went for that line and bishop c4 is okay but this is clearly clearly just very nice to me right this position um you can see i'm getting a lot of play anyway but okay let's have a look so bishop c4 was interesting now bishop g4 uh and now i just castle rook c8 and even here i should be doing all right so i did go for queen b3 but it doesn't like queen b3 so something like h3 just kicking that one away makes a lot of sense but let's have a look queen b3 was the most aggressive move but not nice but did i have any chances later on we don't always trust the computer 100 percent of these lines now this is still very unclear right very unclear but my opponent played really well here and this move was a brilliant move because he just has the threat of a6 and otherwise i'm going to take on d4 and the knight comes in here so this move is a great move and this is where i couldn't quite find a way to go with my time uh, so i played this bishop h5 which i know is a big mistake and i should have gone knight takes d4 and, and allowed the exchange of queens but this doesn't look nice here so knight takes this is so this is not looking so good now the chess dot compu computer is not very strong so i'm going to check this with my own computer but maybe i'll even add it into the chessboard course but the thing the thing i should have done is just stick with the line i know i had this position is in the course it's move 12 and rather than going bishop c4 where my opponent played pretty perfectly i could have played just the normal suggestion and in this position well this is very nice for white for example if if you take here i remember analyzing this one we can even take the queens off and after this check there's king e2 and i'm winning the exchange with some knight knight move and i think when i looked at this with a stronger computer it was even more than a plus a 8.2 advantage it was um it was you're looking at at least plus one or two okay anyway we learn let's move on to the next one uh we're on two out of three and we're playing ali motazali oh my god now me me and ali we, we <laughs> he's a mate of mine we always had the most stupidest of games ever and ali is very dangerous he's a very dangerous hacker so it's not the kind of pairing i want but we're we're, we're we'll just sit back and enjoy it is that david how hello how how you doing mate how you doing david david how in the chat so big shout out to david um now one thing I, you probably should do against ali which i know is is play solid because he's a real hacker he's even bigger hacker than me right he's even bigger at hacking than me so it's it's kind of silly to go hacky against him so i don't know what i'm doing here uh battle of the brits dave david how are you doing david are you right just popping in briefly I'll, 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 I'll try to take down the big owl did you see that last game of mine with the with the grandmaster gambits course david i'll just release this one it's uh, quite interesting I'll, I'll give you the files david some of some of the lines is is richard palace are doing a lot of the the theory work it's uh it's um um yeah m m you might find it useful who knows okay right now back to this um now queen e7 looks sensible but our, our castle um and ah oh, well thank you thank you david um you'll enjoy it you'll enjoy the course it's got like it's got lots of interesting things there i'll buy it only because of the koltanovsky variation yeah that was one of the really exciting lines actually and that is one of the lines which i think where i think white's actually very very sound now this is the kind of bullshit that big al plays and it's actually probably a very good move this is this is why he's a dangerous a dangerous guy because he just doesn't give a damn he's like yeah i'm coming <laughs> and you've got you've got to admire that now do we call his bullshit i don't know i don't really want to call his bullshit because it looks scary but i'm gonna i'm gonna 
because it looks scary. This looks scary to me. You don't want to give Big Al the attack. Uh, classic Alley. Yeah, it is classic Alley, and I probably shouldn't take it. I mean, I've picked totally the wrong opening, but come on, a bit more confident. I'm starting to sound like Sviddler. Oh no, I played so badly. Oh no, oh no, another bad move for me. Oh, I've just won title Tuesday, as he did last week. <laughs> You've got to love Sviddler. Such a mo modest chap, right? The only the only thing I'm relying on this is this move. It, without this move, I'd never be playing this. But I'm hoping that I can at least neutralize that bishop with this move. If rook g1, I might not have even checked. I might not have even checked because I can see him just putting his king over here like he does. I might have just gone bishop f6 anyway, so I'm, I'm quite happy he's gone h4 here. And uh, I feel a bit I feel a bit safer now. I feel a little bit safer now. Hmm. I might need to stock up on the beer soon. How is it in Norway, David? How are you doing over there? Are you doing okay in Norway? Is it, is it all going all right? I hope, hope you're having a good time over there, sir. When lockdown is over, I'm definitely coming to visit you, mate. Uh, we'll, we'll go to the good night. We'll warm up in the good night. We can cuddle up over a chessboard, David. <laughs> I bet it's cold. It's cold enough here, so I can't can imagine what it's like in, in Norway, you know? Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll come over. We'll bring, we'll bring a load of us. I, I know a couple other people who want to come as well. So we're, we're, we're getting a little posse. Maybe we can even convince Fiona. Okay, so now he wants me to take that. Okay, but I don't want to do that really. Now, is there anything wrong with developing a piece? I hope not. I mean, if I take there, this is just the kind of bullshit that he loves. It's still a very messy position this, right? I mean, you know what? I'm very tempted just to try and get the queens off against this nutter. This class, this guy should be sectioned for his, I'm just, what am I doing? I mean, that is just like a move that's the kind of scared move. I, I mean, come on, man. Stop playing scared. He scares me. Big Al scares me, man. I don't like playing hackers, you know? I, I want to be the one hacking. Look at him. Here he comes. He, he clearly hasn't worked this out at all, but he, he's just throwing some... He's throwing the pieces at my king. And this is, this is why he's scary. He's a bloody scary hacker, is old Big Al. I don't like being hacked. Stop it. Now make sure I don't blunder a piece. Um, uh, did we go d4? Uh, am I worried about that one? I, I, I'm not calculating very well at the moment. This is not good when you can't calculate. I mean, this is pathetic playing a move like that. Okay, I'm going to take that one. And I'm not sure I like this decision that I've done here. I'm not sure I like this, actually. Because he's going to put a knight on d6 or something, isn't he? Ah, oh, dear. And I do have kind of useful time edge. Oh, flip a duck. But I don't, I don't know I like this. Is this check here I'm just trying to find a good square for my queen but I'm dodging a lot of bullets here okay and again it's just a weird position but I've kept this queen out but he's going for the hack now this is just going to be a mutual hack he'll take on f7 of course he will I'm hoping I'm stopping nasty things happening to me. Why did I take that way? Oh, he's got check. Look how crafty this guy is. It's a crafty bugger, but two can play that game. I was hoping this one worked, but he's got a check. So I'll go for the backup plan. Uh, oof! Big Owl scares me. He's he's a, he's a scary chap. 
he was probably doing fine there, right? I mean, that was just an absolute mess. Oh, well, I'm actually more relieved than anything else yet. Whenever I play Big Al, it, it, it's, it's just completely bonkers, completely bonkers. I probably, I was probably worse at some point there, definitely worse at some point, but I was probably better at some point, like the final position. Um, so maybe, maybe it was just about okay, right? Is Big Al big? Big Al's a very clever chap. He's an IM, but he made he made a lot of money uh, stockbroking, um, and uh, that, that's that's and now he run. He's the CEO of a biotech company. He's a clever chap. Uh, now I was hoping for this finish. Now I know I've got a couple of good moves here, but I was hoping to land this one in the position. This would have been sweet. Do we get a break now? So I'm going to grab another beer. Is that is it, is it break time? I think it is. I'm going to grab another beer. I'll be back in a sec. I'm going to grab a beer. Yeah, the big tournament. I'll only be a minute, guys, so don't go anywhere. What did I miss? What did I miss? Not much by the looks of it. Ah, oh, okay, good, good. Do we have a link to the Bum Ratty Tournament? I mean, I saw there's a lot of people playing, Jerry. Loads of people playing, right? Loads of people. Um, well, we're gonna have White in the next round, so it's time to bring on, we're gonna bring on the Grandmaster Gambits again in the next one. It's funny that we've had two Sicilian Wing Gambits so I'm hoping my opponent um, in the next round. I hope I hope I don't get a, a wing gambit. I'm hoping for like maybe a um, we can try out another gambit because in the Grandmaster Gambits course, um, obviously it's a course from the white side. How do we flip the board here? This one, um, and it deals with well we've seen we've seen the Sicilian in action. We deal with everything there. We look at the Karakan, so we deal with that one. We deal with everything to do with E5, and also the French defense. So just in case you're wondering what you'll get. And I've just finished a short and sweet, so there's a, a free one hour thing coming out. But again, like I said before, buying my courses does support me. So if anyone wants to give it a go, then do. I'm just putting up the scores now, bear with me, because there's a lot of strong players this time. We're on three out of four, so it's not a terrible score. It's not a terrible score. So here are the top players, but look who is in the lead. And um, does it include the Max Lang? It does, Mifra. Yeah, the Max the Max Lang is is featured heavily in the course. Yeah, it is. Um, okay, so we have Ali Razor at the top, Grandilius, um, Korobov. Oh, there's a lot of good players there. Uh, Nepo, Nepo there, Liam Lequong. Ex well, Blitz Champion, Eric Hansen. Ah, oh, a lot of good players. Who's who's this chap? I've beaten. Ah, oh, Indian lad. Okay, is that Nihal Sarin? Might be. Um, yeah, look at it. And it's, like I say, one of the strongest tournaments in the world, this one. Especially online. Hikaru's half a point ahead of me. So you never know. We might, we might get to play Hikaru. And I'm on this group on three out of four. So we're still in a position to get some very strong opponents and some good games which is always nice can try out our gambit repertoire it's a great way to learn i mean like whatever whatever course you buy whether it be that one i'd say you know we all want to get better at chess once you've brought a course you know learn the course 
and um, then play Blitz in the openings. Try to get as many openings in an evening you can, and then you can always look at those games, and you can look at those games, and you can be like, where did I go wrong? And you, and that if you just find out where your mistakes are, you can just really get your openings in very, very good shape. Very good shape. Da, 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 da. What's the prize? The prize? The prize in this, I don't know what the prize is because I never win it. <laughs> have the game started? I hope not. I hope the games haven't started. I mean, if they have, then I'm missing out somehow. But I hope not. Let's fingers crossed they haven't started. Um so I'm just gonna see if Ali messaged me after that one. Should we put it on the computer? We probably don't have a lot of time. They always have a break after round four of eleven in this competition, and the reason they do that is they, they check for cheaters. I mean, even, you'll be amazed how many title players cheat. I mean, I've heard numbers and I'm absolutely gobsmacked by the amount of cheaters online. It's really incredibly high. It's it's a large amount. Is David Howe playing? David's not playing. He was in the chat earlier on. Uh, he's probably got a date, old David. Mr. Casanova. I hope so. He's not playing. I'd love to see him play as well. What's my best result in title Tuesday? I, I, I'm not sure. Maybe I've got eight points out of 11. Um, obviously, eight out of 11 is a ginormous score because, as you can see, it's 11 rounds and, and it's the best players in the world, right? It's the best players in the world. So getting getting a big score it is not easy when you're playing, you know, the world's elite. And I have to admit, I'm not as quick as these guys, especially with a mouse. That's my excuse. But I still think I can compete against them when I get my right right ideas in. And uh, we'll see. Hopefully we get someone someone good. Yeah, Grandilius is Grandilicious. Good name, right? Folder saying he had two dates on Sunday. Well, I don't know if he did or not. Um, maybe. I wouldn't be surprised. If he's, is he still there? speed shouldn't matter checkmate ends the game well that's what i always go for chess pats but it doesn't always work right it doesn't always work as much as i'd like trying to checkmate my opponents it, it often backfires i mean uh you know but still uh okay well maybe we will have a look at this last game just quickly i mean if the game's the only problem with this is the game start and i miss it and uh Oh, wow, I was, I was actually doing quite well in this game for a long, long time, actually. I didn't realise that. Um, okay, I'm not going to do this because I've probably... I've done this before and I've missed my game. And it was just a messy... It was just a very, very messy game. So uh, we, won't, we won't have a look at it, I'm afraid, yet. The games won't be long, anyway. Uh, da, 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 da. So, who do we want to play on three out of four, I wonder? If we could pick someone to play, who would we want to play? Let's have a little look at the list. So on my score group of three out of four, now Ukrainian players. I, I seem to struggle against the Ukrainians. They always seem to do well against me. Um, well, we're in 65th there. Who do we want to play? Okay, well, oh no, we're playing the Parham. We're playing Parham. This guy is as sharp as anything. Yeah, this is a good pairing. I'll take this pairing on. Um, and we're going for the hillbilly. The Grandmaster Gambit's hillbilly idea. Now, this is this is in the course. And it's pretty damn dangerous for Black. Black has to be a little bit careful. He's going the mainline hillbilly. Hillbilly. He's off with a hillbilly. And the idea of this gambit, it's all in the course, is that you go F3 and you try to get a black Mardima type of position where you come in here. Now, D3 is actually a move that we also suggest in the course, but I'm going for this one. And I'm just going to try to go bishop here and try to attack with everything we've got. We don't want our opponent's castle. Which you can't do now. So we're going to castle quickly. 
and we get a very interesting gambit position so he can't castle so i can now aim at his king which i may well do but he has got a blocker here now do we take and go in somehow interesting position i feel like i feel like this has gone well again actually what about this little move because that is one of the problems with my position and now i'm going to get rid of that one it's, it's getting in the way and i want to come in now my opponent wants the castle. Okay, we'll put the rook there. So if he castles, I can at least take on e7. And I'm thinking that this is a move to play. Or this one, maybe. And when I say castle, he can only castle queenside. So the aim of the course as well is to try and, try and stop them from getting their king safe. But I must admit, this guy's, this guy's a good player. <laughs> okay so knight in he takes here and is there nothing there all right let's go for it let's try it i've got a very clever idea this and this which might also be a very bad idea it doesn't matter being a pawn down It doesn't matter being two pawns down who gives a damn if you checkmate now i might even have this this idea coming up as well so takes so he has to defend he's defending and it feels like i have a good attack here He, he's now do I just bring my queen back in keep the pressure up I want to play like h3 and g4 but oh. Oh, okay I don't know about this I probably had a better mood than that too slow compared to these kids now right he's just grabbing it But I thought this was strong, right? He's got to take here. Oh, he's defending like this, okay. Okay, I missed that one. Why did I put my knight back there? That was a bit silly. Still should be some play here though, I think. Because his king's in the middle. But I'm not playing that natural moves. So he has to try running away, right? Well, I mean, it's not as good as it was, and I've spent too much time on this one. But it was quite interesting. I wonder, I wonder if I missed something a bit more, a bit more obvious, right? Oh shit, he's coming in here, right? Ugh. The table is changing quickly. He's coming straight down there yeah this is not good right he's turned it around on me i think when you're playing these players as well you get out you get out of sight a lot but here i'm just losing so we will resign oh dear decent position again but well played to my opponent he's a good player 
but confidence lacking, I think. Let's have a look at the game. Let's see. Uh, we can treat it as a learning process, and I'm very happy with the position I got, but where did I go wrong? Again, the opening was... Look at this accuracy is completely unfair. Completely unfair there. That's not that you know, sometimes it's completely wrong. But let's have a look. So around here, I, I like my I like my opening position. I just want to see. I just want to see if I miss something. So this is all theory, which I I very happily play, and, and I don't mind at all. And I get this I've got this kind of position loads of times where they can't castle. So I, I honestly think that well okay i mean again i'm not really believing the computer in this one but uh i'm i'm thinking that i i was definitely the opening has worked perfectly and the computer says i've got an advantage but if you think i'm a pawn down if i mean it, it's it's a very fun opening to play so let's have a look but i'm annoyed i'm not i'm not seeing things as much as well as i sh would want to and now well i think this is okay i don't think this is a bad move i'm happy so far and this see all seemed okay his king is still in the middle now this seemed all right but i think i started to go wrong here my initial thought is to bring the queen back with ongoing pressure yeah so just to bring the queen back and to play to play maybe you know maybe just play in the long term queen on e3 h3 and g4 but i played h3 first because I thought I had a tactic against this, but I, I didn't. My original thought here was rook takes f5, but this, I just realized this doesn't work. I thought I was being a genius with this move. Yeah, this is my amazing idea. But unfortunately, well, I only saw pawn takes here. And after a check, where it looks like I'm winning the queen, he can now move his queen to e4. Uh, and this is this is the the move that I missed. I only saw this variation, uh, and this is why this is why I I didn't play this line. I mean, let me just leave there. So h3 was a big mistake. I mean, if I just play the queen back here and keep the pressure on the position, this looks this looks very tempting. Yeah, keep the attack going, and I can go h3 g4, and I've just got his king in my sights. Okay, he's probably all right here, but no more than okay now the computer's also given a line after queen b6 of playing bishop takes d5 and it's given me a big advantage here so if i get this again i'm going to remember to do it this way and now my rook comes this way this is very interesting right let's say he goes bishop here i get my rook to this square and he moves his queen somewhere and now we have this funny maneuver and this looks like a very nice way to play much more active than what i got in the game i'm still attacking his position and his king is stuck and that kind of advantage that the computer's giving is probably a winning advantage actually so the opening again a, a success now if he doesn't play this move it looks like all of his moves so far have been okay what does he play and even the computer thinks it's equal let's give him bishop g4 when i can even think about castle and queen side here and whatever the computer gives he can't castle so uh again a little bit disappointing I i'm just too slow not quite sharp enough at the moment i've been working i'll be doing this commentary and again i'm going to get my excuses in now I've been doing this commentary and and working on the court this course for so long now I, I really just want to get back and play a bit more blitz right you know getting a Again, I need. I want to just have some fun and play blitz. But let's see. So I'm on three out of five. I mean, to make this a good tournament, I need to win some more games. That's clear. I need to get a little roll going, really. So that, so this game I need to win. Clearly, I need to win this one. Now let's go. Let's go Sicilian. We we had a French defense last time. Didn't get me a great position. Now my favourite is is the dragon. And he's going for the Leaven Fish. Is that the Leaven Fish variation? Where they threaten this E5 move. It's actually a very dangerous idea. And I'm trying to stop him playing this move at the moment. So I have stopped him playing that. And their normal idea is to come around this way and try to checkmate you. 
So he's playing like a complete hacker as well, but I'm going to try and calmly get a counter-attack against his center. So here he comes with this idea. And this has all been seen all been seen before but what do I actually play here how do we improve now I could bring the Queen the Knight in over there but then what what happens if I even take that one I don't see how to follow up and he's got this very simple idea which I just used I just used against my opponent and I don't want to I don't wanna allow my opponent here to do it against me so can we play this this looks risky but I'm thinking of opening up this diagonal by okay well I, I'm, I'm actually happier now that he's captured that because I, I feel that definitely helps me I don't think my king should be in an, as much danger now it's still in some danger because because of this one but I do have now do I do I come this way I've got to watch out for this one but my knight is so far quite nicely situated. And it's a very dynamic position, this one. Double-edged. Double-edged. Okay, so he comes in. Bit of pressure on my knight. And I could even just try to double... Okay, I'm going to go super solid and try to get my bits around here. Now he probably actually wants to get his knight there, so maybe moving his bishop away now would be a good idea. Like bishop e3. But I'm just keeping it nice and controlled at this moment in time. And do I have enough pressure against these guys? Maybe. I think it's just very, this is just probably equal-ish, at least, equal position. I don't, I'm not sure I, again, sometimes you play moves and i think i had this in all the games i kind of lost and you play a move and you're like hmm not sure i like that move you know uh do you guys get that at all but i don't like that move that move to me looks really bad why has he moved his rook off the open file that looks mad madness to me i would never move that rook there i mean it just looks completely odd doing it that way around so okay now do we come let's go to the more aggressive square and I'm going to try to take advantage of the fact that he's moved his rook away by now trying to come in with knight to f4. And even ideas of sacrificing on f3 uh, in, in this position. So that's what we're aiming to do. Knight f4 and sometimes rook takes f3. Get these ideas going. I haven't taken his bishop yet. There's no, there's, there seems to be no need to take that one. Um, I don't have to rush into doing that. I got time time to consider that move so he's gone backwards now and I'd really like to open this one up now does that mean well d5 looks looks like the way only way I'm gonna try to get this one in the game because if I get this one in the game combined with this his position could simply crumble and now I'm not even thinking about this move it just I mean, can he read? No, I, I'm going to play this. This looks, this looks correct because we've managed to get this one right there. I've even got knight e4 now. My pieces are flying here. Let's go knight e4 because I'm seeing the f2 square. Now I did mention a sacrifice on f3, but oh, these pieces are just playing themselves now. I say it and I probably mess it up now if he go okay now this bishop is I've got eight where's he gonna put his queen if I go h5 of course I planned that from 10 moves before as every grandmaster does every grandmaster sees a hundred moves ahead of course they do and I can't believe I nearly didn't see Harry the H pawn moving to win the queen that would have been a travesty Harry would have never forgiven me that Okay, a little bit smoother there. A little bit more of a smoother game, that one. Now, I haven't said hello to a lot of you in the chat today. Uh, uh, Title Tuesday is always a bit intense, right? It's always a bit like in your face. And um, 
you know, it, it, it's it's not easy to look at the chat because I, I mean, it, it is like the strongest tournament online. There's like 700 players generally at start. People withdraw, and and you know, even if you get over 50 percent, you should be quite happy. But I'm kind of using it today myself as as a tool to test out the Grandmaster Gambit's course. And I think so far, the opening has been a complete success. In both the games I lost, I got much, well, much better positions. I don't know about much better, but better positions, aggressive attacking better positions. But I haven't had that final killer touch in either of those games, which has been a little bit annoying because I felt like uh, things went, went according to plan. But chess is a hard game. The, the opening's not going to win you the game normally. You know, it's it's playing well and calculating well. And uh, I didn't quite have that level in those games. So that was a little bit a little bit disappointing. So we've done six rounds. And I think I'm on four out of six. Um, so what be, it'd be nice to get to get to six out of eight. If I get to six out of eight, you know, I can still get nine out of 11, which is a pretty big score, right? So... We can we can punt for that one nine out nine out of eleven. I'm more worried if my beer supply is going to run out. This is my second beer. I think that's enough today. Two beers with a bit of blitz. That's sensible. It's a sensible amount, right? I don't always like being sensible. Not always. Not always. Okay. So um, so I'm just checking, catching up on the chat here. So, hello, five card draw. Um, and uh, just I'm, I'm trying to read the chat, but my brain's not working that quickly as I want today. Um, do you his this say do do you not like endings? Hang on a minute, let me keep going. I can't read that. Um, chess personality test that was quite cool the chess personality test um yeah I'm, I, I was thinking of making one of them as well but it was uh, it would take a bit long to do captain bumratty is saying it's not it's nice to win with the move h5 right that's a nice move to win with uh, i mean you know i think people are getting a bit annoyed with me now I'll keep banging on about harry but he is he is one of the loves of my life and i was looking at all these ideas like get the queen in you know, can I can I find a way to bust through here? But it's like, no, just the simple H5 trapping that. So that that was enjoyable. Enjoyed that one. Uh, before Sokolowski is saying, please don't worry about our inane chat. I'm not worried. I just like I like you guys in the chat. It's a nice community we have here. You're all. Um, well, we got. I think we got a nice mature audience that watches my stupid uh, chess. And I like that, you know, you guys, you guys seem very sensible chaps and anyone who's not sensible quickly gets banned. <laughs> uh, Otis is saying some beer bits. Thank you, sir. I, I like, I like beer bits. Who doesn't? Um, and GM vision is just like eagle. Well, I'm not sure if I'm quite like an eagle, more, more like a sparrow, I would say, or maybe a blue tit. A nice simple blue tit. Captain Bumratty, Harry the Prince of Pawns, indeed. Um, Captain Bumratty, who are you calling mature? Well, I think we're kind of mature-ish, but we would never want to get too mature, do we? No one wants to grow up too much, right? Why do you, no one wants to grow up too much. That would just be stupid. Don't be in a rush to grow up. That would not, no, don't, don't rush to grow up. No, no, no. A bearded tit says before Sokolowski. True, I could be a bearded tit. That is actually a bird. If anyone's wondering what it is, it's not like uh, you know a bearded breast or something. Um, poggers, there had to be one, didn't there? There just had to be one, and you are the one, poggers. You are the one. Grow muscles, says chess press. I have no idea where that came from, but uh, thank you for your very intelligent contribution to the chat. Very, very good. Okay, right, so we're playing Monolize. Should we go for the Sicilian again? We got black again. I was looking forward to another white to wheel out another gambit. And that, that's the thing, if you do want to support me and you do, oh, I hate this. 
Um, if you do want to support me and you do want to have some fun, go and click on it. Come on, I know you want to, boys and girls. I really don't like this line. It, it's like one of those ones which Magnus now plays. He goes like C4, grind, 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 grind. We want some action, man. The problem when you're black is it's much harder to get action. And I'm talking about chess action, just in case you're wondering what I'm going on about. Um, when you've got the black pieces. Now, I want to play this, but already he's got E5. He's got E5 making me think. So where do I put the queen? This just looks... Do I just whack it over here? Let's whack it over there. Um, and this position, it's absolutely fine for me, but it's its when you're white, and the, another advantage why I started with this course with the white pieces is when you're white, you can nearly always gambit if you so wish to, to gambit uh, because you can force the pace. But when you're black, you often can't force the pace. And I wouldn't willingly go into this position where my opponent has... The Maroxy bind. This wouldn't be. This wouldn't be. Uh, this is a good choice against me because uh, it leaves leaves me with slightly passive position, and and I don't like uh, playing passive positions. And he's trying to play this one, and uh, you know I, I'm I'm going to swap queens here. I'm trying my my positional plan. This is going to be a bit more of a positional plan. Is to try and take over like some squares. And sometimes white can find that advancing too quickly over on here can actually be a weakness. And I'm thinking now that this is the way I want to play. And I'm trying to say that's a weakness, but my opponents come straight in with a good move. And we're gonna have a little transformation. And it's a pity that pawn is, is attacked at the end. Because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to play this move anyway. Because otherwise he's going to get control, control of the C file. So I, I'm going to have to play this anyway. Two bishops, but his pawn structure is slightly compromised on, on the king side. So I should play my E5 repertoire. Why am I not playing that? I'll play that next. You're, you're completely correct. I, I, I'm meaning to play it. But I, I'm kind of like I was. I wanted to just get one open Sicilian. What I like doing is like changing my openings up because it keeps me a bit fresher. So I, I wanted to play a French a open Sicilian and an E5. And sometimes when you're thrown in there, you just forget. And I've done this often. I've even done this in a tournament before. I spent like a couple of hours preparing in the morning for a variation and for a different move one. And then on move one, I play something completely different. I'm like, what the? What are you doing, you nutter? Why are you doing that? You prepared for something else. You're doing that. What's wrong with you? So that was that was embarrassing. So I've done that before. A mind fart, as the great David Howe would say. So I, I'm assuming this is this is about even this this kind of position. I'm hoping my knight's not in trouble. My opponent's got the two bishops, but I, I might even prefer my position because it's quite closed over here. This is a good move because otherwise I, I think I do. I do swap off the rooks even and I think even swapping the rooks off his bishops his bishops are not very good in certain structures when you've got this very compact mass a knight's actually quite good with a compact mass so and I, I think you know I've said this before and this was maybe one of the things where I got I got the most controversy you know in, in a tweet I, I said that bishop pair is overrated and uh, everyone was like well no they're not and, and literally that just went mental but i actually think they are a little bit overrated uh yeah forgetting your prep on move one is, is quite special right <laughs> only i only i could forget it only i could okay so now knight d4 king f1 and his king comes in i don't want to allow that uh, should be good for me. Bishop here takes takes rooks. Oh, sexy. I've got a little sexy idea here, boys and girls. Oh, I was hoping he would take and go rook c1, but I, I, he didn't. So it's not as sexy. Did you see my idea? My idea was then knight d4. Now, why can't I take this one? Because he's got... 
Now again, my position should be good, but um, it's taken on b7. I don't really want that uh, position. Come on, move, move, you Egypt. Okay, I'm gonna take it. Oh, hang on a minute. Then he goes there. Oh bugger! I didn't really want this because too many exchanges. But I'm hoping my knight is not good. I've just realized my knight is really pretty shite. I was hoping to get g5 and the knight here. g5 is a good positional move. And this one. Time. Shit, I didn't see that. Fuck a duck. Am I getting mated or something stupid? Well, I'm threatening mate. Must be bloody good. Oh god, well, there must have been a mate there. I couldn't see it in time. H5, King F5. I couldn't see a mate. He's coming this way. What a bloody rogue. Should be good. Well, should be bloody good now, right? It's getting better. Oof, there must have been a mate there. I mean, there must have been a mate, right? He doesn't need to play on. Should we get another one? Yeah? Why not? Okay, thank you. You're listening. Oh, oof wasn't the bishop hanging yeah pro probably there was lots of pieces hanging there but I, 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 whenever i get down to my last 20 seconds i'm just i'm just a, a a flipping i'm just like a fit you know like if you catch a fish and you put it on the deck what does the fish do it basically starts flipping for oxygen that that is me i am like a flipping fish when i get down to 20 seconds my brain just goes to slush and i can't calculate but the reason i went into that ending is that it might actually look uh, equal disposition uh, when he takes on b7. Maybe you can even think that white's better, but as I've said, when you have compact pawns all on one area of the board, the knight is generally a better piece than the bishop. I don't know if that's entirely true because I can get my knights to a lot of nice dark squares here. Um, but I am wondering if I missed a checkmate at this key moment, and let's just go there and the key moment well wrong square was around here now maybe i go h5 again i'm not spotting h5s but then he runs this way so it'd be nice if i could win a game with h5 and here it just looks like there must be a checkmate was there a checkmate here n yang no is the answer to that if you buy the course above i will consider playing you in a game of chess but otherwise no I've played 11 games of chess I ain't playing no more um is there a mate here because I was thinking I, I was just about to play this move right but then after here I'm like I can't see a mate I can't see a mate and I was like hang on a minute there should be a mate here but where is it and all of a sudden he's threatening to come here so it kind of feels like there should be a checkmate here but the best I could do was um to do something else well, uh, knight. I don't know what you're going on about. Knight d4 is moving the knight to that square. That 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 doesn't look like checkmate to me. So, are you thinking about going here, here, and then here with knight d4? Maybe that's what you're going. Ah, very nice chess press. Very nice. That is very very nice. I mean, my opponent can fight on. That is a really sexy way to finish. 
He can now play this one, right? But of course I'm winning because uh, he can now... Oh, but now I come here, right? No, because he still comes here when I check. Yeah, very nice, though. Very nice. I mean, I think the way I played it was probably winning anyway. Um, I had to be a bit careful around this point. Uh, and this little sequence of moves, it probably was winning because I just cover everything, right? But he had one last chance in. His last chance here was to take this one, which I think he's just losing, but he had to try it. Because, okay, are we playing GM Krikor, another brilliant streamer? So we're going to come in with our repertoire, Battle of the Streamers. Hello, Krikor. And we're going to try our E4 repertoire out again. Ah, oh, everyone's playing a Sicilian. Okay, well, we actually had, we actually did have, um, I know what to do now, though. Um, we actually did have, uh, apart from the ceiling, we had one uh, hillbilly. So this is the other way that you can play it. If they don't strike in the center quickly. Okay, so now he's doing this, which is interesting. And it shouldn't be very good because I have the extra tempo of C4 here. Um, as well as going back to the standard plan. But C4 is sort of, C4 is very tempting. I might have to give another pawn up, but I, I don't mind doing that. Knight c3 is very tempting. I kind of... Okay, I'm going to go this way because I want to get my pieces in. Now, this pawn I'm not worried about. And now I suppose I should take this one back now. Claiming compensation. Let's develop the pieces as quickly as we can. He's going to try to get castled, so I want to play Queen E2, but he might castle anyway. Well, let's see. I have a bit of pressure here, but I'm thinking now um, the line he plays is a very rare line, and I might have done better actually to not get involved with knight c3 okay well i've got a castle but now now i'm actually starting to get a bit worried this is i forgot about this move can i take on f7 mm, probably not probably not but maybe i don't know it's, it's not crazy i'll probably try it now now, now that I've got the position, I'm like, oh shit, I said I'm going to try it. I'll probably have to try it. Oh, fuck it. That's the professional term in the business is, oh, fuck it. And we are going to go here. And go for the mad, probably very unsound attack. Have a swig, Simon. Have a swig. Okay, now I have to really try this one. Any counterplay here? I, 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 you can't castle. I'm a piece down, but um, it looks, it looks, it looks reasonably interesting to me. This, if he could castle, it would not be interesting, but he can't. And, you know, I've got ideas here. If he takes my knight, I obviously take here. And he can't castle, and I've got this knight coming in here. So I've got knight b5. So actually, this, this is the kind of compensation I was aiming for when, when playing this. But maybe here he always goes queen e5. But it seems interesting. This seems like a very interesting position to me. And again, you know, this course is all about this, this crazy way of playing, right? You know, <laughs> it's not for the faint-hearted. Okay, so I have to take here. And now I'm relying on the knight coming to this beautiful square. Um, and he can't, you know, okay, so he's trying to get rid of those ones. Now even taking and going knight in is not stupid here at all. <sighs> I expect you will defend that one. Um, 
This is the this is an annoying defensive move, right? Definitely an annoying move. Because I can't keep hold of my knight. Queen c4 takes. Just I've got to keep that knight. Uh, queen here, rook here. Don't like that. If I take the queen off, takes knight here, king f7. Um, seems to be alright. If I take take rook here, is that anything? Can't be. I have to play this. I don't like it though. So I have to go all the way back and he can even now start to have his own fun because he's threatening this one as well ah didn't work again not a day for sacrifices today I haven't been able to get them to work at all uh, well done Krikor you bastard and this did not work out very well and yeah okay of course I'm losing here we'll try, we'll try a move or two so um okay let's have a look at that one um now i feel like that one i definitely in this opening what did i recommend so this position's all fine and here I'm, i i think i think i should just be playing even just be playing this one now why why did i go knight c3 let's take this one because i ended up wasting time with bishop takes a3 and this is what's in the course again i've got temp i get, keep getting tempted by ideas that are not in the course which is just stupid and this is just the normal idea why didn't i do this here this is just why why do i keep divert going away and this this is a course this is in in those other lines this is a main this is the main line position right so why why am i not doing this a tempo up and this would have been again not following it i need to get a little bit more uh, and he defended well right he defended well uh all credit to him but uh we will go and let's have a look at this game uh, a lot of mistakes in this game definitely not not very well not a well played game well Krikor played very high accuracy and you can see again the opening's doing well i'm getting okay it's always going to be up and down but when you actually get into the opening bits i'm doing well but then i played this horrible horribly around here and then he he of course played excellently um so now this is all good this is all good and here this is this is less like this is not an excellent move this is not an excellent move maybe it was all right in the game we can go because even in the game it said i'm better but this this just makes a lot more sense just going to the lines that i already know about uh, and we just stick with our plan knight b5 and bishop f4 uh, for example knight here we go in and this gets very very uh very very tough for him to, to to play this position it doesn't like this one but this is clearly a good move the computer is often wrong with my bishop coming to this square so um ooh, very good accuracy a lot of these grandmasters they are playing very well against my gambits but I'm still doing all right. Let's have a look though. This is still quite interesting. Still interesting. Still interesting. And it thinks I'm better here. So I haven't done that badly. And now this is where I went mental. I did not need to go crazy here, right? Um, I kind of like, I kind of saw some ideas with this move, but uh, Krikor defended very well you have to give you have to give that he defended very well uh i should have played something like this when i'm still stopping him from castling because if he castles well i say stopping him but i i think with uh bishop takes e7 i'm, I'm going to be doing at least okay here so this one was a little bit crazy but it looked kind of fun with this f3 move is there any other way to play it? Well, I could have gone queen c4. That is the other idea. Maybe this is maybe this is this is actually the way to go, right? Because if you can't stop my queen coming into this square, maybe my sac and look at this. The sacrifice now looks quite sound. I played f3 really quickly, but it's weird because it gives it as minus 1.60. But had I played queen c4, it suddenly changes. And queen c4 here 
yeah why didn't I do that why don't I just put the Queen in there this would have this could have been my brilliancy it was there I wanted to play this I, I'm one of the biggest mistakes to do and I think it's a bit of lack of confidence on my part at the moment I have to say by not playing enough and stuff is to not go with your instinct and in this position you should just go with your instinct just get the queen there because the computer is giving this as the top move but now it's not the computer doesn't know what to do see the computer even doesn't know what to do with this one this could have been this could have been it and then i would have shown you all the power of the course but instead i'm not hitting it today getting some interesting positions some fun positions but not working unfortunately what round was that one then round eight so there's another little break now so we've got uh three rounds left you can have a look at the scores as they come in i'm going to sip my beer and uh my opponents who are playing against these gambits they've all got like 97 percent, right they've all they've all gone up for night like night they've got 90 percent 97 percent when they actually do it so they are playing really well and it's just i'm not spotting the follow-ups and also i need to follow my ideas uh in the future games okay so we have now eight rounds and at the top liam le Quang, ali razor must have lost to him uh we're on five out of eight not too bad i mean if we could finish with three out of three then obviously six seven eight eight out of eight out of eleven is is a massive score uh a massive massive score and um so I, i'm still i'm still going to try to run in with the last three rounds get some get some attacks on the board and try to get a decent score let's see who's on my score group you can see how strong this is well peter Svidler is only half a point above me so it shows you oh he's a point above me but it shows you how strong this tournament is and we can have to scroll down a bit and Vidit is on the same as me we all know how strong Vidit is but I can feel it's not my best of well it's certainly not my best type of Tuesday but we can still make it good with a good finish and there's a lot of grandmasters below me of course they're gonna always be you can scroll down further when you've got so many players in the tournament uh, Eric Rosen on the same points me maybe I'll play Eric oh, I'm not sure I can be, I'm not sure I want to play Eric at the moment because obviously when you're playing when you're playing a fellow streamer you, you're kind of like there's even more pressure I'd rather just have a beer and chill out <laughs> I don't want to feel like oh no if I lose this one it's going to go up on Twitter I, I want to you know I, I also want to enjoy my evening in kind of a stress-free way it's been a bit stressful recently I mean uh, just because I've been commentating on this uh, like big chess thing right I can't even remember the name of it um, and that takes a lot out of you commentating all day i've been filming this course in the mornings and preparing i've been doing this course for the last like two three months um on and off you know like i've uh, been doing it a lot and it's nice to finish it so i'm hoping i'll get a little bit of chilled out time but i do like title tuesday and i, I often think oh yeah i'll play title tuesday because it'll be ni nice and relaxing never nice and relaxing <laughs> never nice and relaxing especially when you're getting good positions and your openings are working but you're just following up with rubbish even when i sack a piece i'm getting a nice position but i just play f3 what a idiot maybe i do need to get lessons off uh, ben feingold oh my words am i gonna have to pay feingold to give me lessons never play f3 is his motto am i gonna have to go that way am i gonna have to try and sell a course so i can buy a lesson or fine gold oh no chess is hard it is hard no i mean you know but when you know you can do better it's it's annoying i know i can do better especially the position i'm getting but let's try and enjoy the last three rounds honky blood truth hurts just stop it please stop it <laughs> okay um eric's eric's not um streaming okay um, I often do that I mean I, I think the, the most fun tournaments is I'd love to stream and listen to music and I know other streamers do that but I'm always a bit worried I mean I don't really like pop music I like you know rock psychedelic rock I like quite a lot of weird stuff 
but it's good music, very good music. But I was told if you now broadcast, there's a danger, and this doesn't often happen, but it's a danger that you get you get one warning, but even on the second or third time you do it, you literally get kicked off off Twitch. And it seems to me like the risk of being kicked off Twitch to listen to some music is is, is a bit too high to risk it. And I can't be bothered to uh, read all the rules of it. It is a Katie beer, Joe Zeppel. It is. What the thing is, if you put music in your ears, I'm going to end up not talking, right? Uh, because it's very hard. I think I find to listen to music, talk, and, and do it. It's just another thing that clouds my mind. That's what I find actually. So I've tried it before, but I mean, it'll mean I have a silent stream, which is actually not a bad idea. Maybe you'll like that. I'll just shut the hell up and just play some chess. Maybe we we'll give that a go sometime. Da, 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 da. Yeah. What about the Killer French rebooted? Not really. There's loads of chessable courses on the French already. I mean, Anish Giri did a course on the French. Harry Krishna did a course. So with those heavyweights doing a course, I, I don't really want to do it. And I'm more interested also in finding new ideas like French defense I've played all my life. And I might find it a bit boring doing a course on the French. I wouldn't rule it out, but you know, when you're doing something new, like trying to find interesting gambits, it's much more inter it's much more exciting because you're finding new ideas. It's all, it's all early ground. So these ideas need to be played more by, by players to get them well known. But I much prefer like, you know, trying to create something uh, a, li a little bit new, right? So hence why, hence why this Grandmaster Gambits was, was perfect, you know? Keep it fresh. Keep it fresh. Uh, Bong Walk, thank you very much. Are you talking about the Grandmaster Gambits course? Quite possibly. I've done the last two courses I've been have been very aggressive, but they're a lot of fun. And at the end of the day, that's why we play chess. I mean, the games I'm having here, just if I'd have played Queen C4 there, maybe the gut instinct was all right in, in that one. But in future, I will just take, play Knight takes here. Um, and if he goes Knight here this knight b5 is always tempting but maybe i can wait with that move a little bit i don't think we really need those comments flash in the chat do we i think that's a little bit degrading to be honest i mean you'll probably realize that when you hit the age of 11 but we don't really want that kind of we don't really want that uh, let's do a little time out there shall we there we go so that's the first little time out I've done for a while feels good lose the game do a time out woohoo um, what about all these DJs on Twitch they're playing I don't know I don't know the rules I mean you can google the rules as well all I've done is google can you play music on Twitch and basically it says no <laughs> so I, I guess you can you can risk it uh, if you want to Silent stream sounds like a dystopian film. I think you could do you could do a really fun one. Let's say you do some Let's say you do it in black and white That could be quite cool with an old background. You could do some like trippy black and white stream Make it a little bit make it a black and white board, you know go for a black and white theme with some nice chilled music Looking at it like this, you'll be so ready for Bunratty come Saturday. Well, maybe, maybe. You never know. You never know. Have you got the link to Bunratty? I keep asking for you, Jerry. Give it in the chat and we can show everyone who's playing. It's going to be fantastic. Okay, right. I'm angry now. Uh, we've got three games left. I'm only happy with three out of three. If I get three out of three, it can be a good evening. So let's go for it. Right, we're going for the E5, which I forgot to play last time. And this is from another one of my courses and we're going here and now we're going for the Duboff idea of h6 and g5 because that is the way we roll oh yeah and, and this is a little idea that is in the dynamite course and it's a load of fun need to win this game need to take this one down so let's do it off we go Now, I'm just going to keep coming. Why not? And this is the 
an idea that I've done a little bit of work on with Blair and it's a lot of fun. Now that move, actually, I, I played that far too quickly. That is a move. But there might have been another option there as well. This is this is like one of the moves anyway. We're just going to try to get the queen over here. I mean, it's, again, the, these 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 opening ideas that I'm playing are incredibly risky. They're not for not for the faint-hearted. That's for sure. And I expect he can. Okay, so now if I go d5, what is going on? We're going to find out, aren't we? What is this, man? This is this is this is completely nuts, right? Completely nuts. I mean, knight here. I can even go knight d6. Is that strong? Knight here, knight d6, knight g7. Check. So he's come back. Now I think I can win a piece here. So. Let's do it. Let's win that piece. We're not. We're not going to show any fear. And his idea is, when I move this knight, he's going to take, 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 and try to turn the attack around on me. But I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Maybe I. No. Do I have that one? No, because his queen. His queen is on it. But I do have ideas with the bishop coming here. And I am a piece up. So yet again. The opening, fantastic. Ten moves against the Italian game. We're playing a very strong player and we've basically got a winning position. What is he doing there? Well, he's already losing, but that is one. Look at that, 11 move win. Put on your pipe and smoke it, my dear friend. That's more like it. That is indeed, Blair. Thank you. I'm gonna do a massive thank you to Blair for that one, who's Barbary Macaque very good friend of mine but Blair is another guy I, I work on my chest with because to be honest I, I don't have time just to look at op do all the opening research myself and I find it much more giving and much more uh, worthwhile when I work with good analysts and Blair's got a super computer and he told me about this line I mean I I've never played E5 but we did this course recently yeah another course uh, the dynamite course which you can buy it's, it's a really good course on this and the line that Blair showed me is, well, this is normally a very solid variation, but after d3, you often get a positional boring game where you like, you know, move your pieces around forever. But this idea, which Daniil Duboff used to beat Sergei Karyakin, is very exciting. And it can really, really um, destroy your opponent quickly, as it did here. So for example, I think you're supposed to go d6 here. Um, <laughs> I should have played d6, but g5 is interesting. And now c3, this idea, I, I, I know this from the course. And the point is, if they don't go to h4, let's say they go here, which is more natural, you can, you can grab a space advantage now. And you can go d5. Um, and the point of this is, you get, a, you get a very exciting position. Your bishop's coming to e6. You're all ready to attack them. You're going to castle queenside, which you don't do normally in the Italian. And if you want to rock and roll, this is the way to play, right? Boom. So um, my opponent played knight h4, which I, I see a lot of guys play. But I think knight takes e4 is just a good move. I had some uh, little doubts about this. Um, but I think it's just good. And... Um, after d5, this is where I think my opponent blundered. He went queen e2, and I'm just winning here, basically. The one line I thought he could try was to take here and then take here. But I realized I actually go bishop to e6 because bishop d6 is a very strong idea. And let's remember I'm a piece up here. So I was wondering if he could go g3. And then I suddenly realized, and you might have heard me talking about this, oh no, I can't defend my knight. But then I suddenly realized I had this move in the game because he can't take the queen now and after I go here grab his queen back I'm just a piece up and at this level a piece up is enough 
Now the one, but the one thing he could have tried, and it, I feel, which would have been extremely exciting, um, instead of Queen E2, which I think is just losing, he could have tried this one, Knight F5. This this was more interesting. And I don't know what's happening here. I've got lots of ideas. This one kind of looked key, moving the knight to d6 because I'm attacking two pieces now, right? So if he takes here with check, I take with the queen and I'm attacking his queen, I'm attacking the bishop, so I'll win a piece. I don't take with a bishop here because he goes queen g7, attacking my rook. But I wasn't sure what was happening here if he goes knight g7 check. This is what I was trying to calculate. This looked really mental. Because I was even thinking about going king here. <laughs> what is this? Uh, uh, this move. Uh, what line are you? What line are you looking at there? Only move knight g6. I was wondering about knight g6 Blair at the time. That's the move that I suddenly had a re recollections we looked at, and we're a bit unclear about. But what 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 is this line? What is this line? Is this a, is this playable for someone? <laughs> um, this is just completely unclear to me after knight f5 it feels after knight f5 i should be doing well somehow but oh do i just go knight f6 i just go knight f6 as you as you just said blair yeah of course of course knight f6 this was the way i only looked at knight d6 but the nice idea here and blair you can see he's done a lot of work on this course he knows all the lines back to front is that this is completely winning because i tap the queen i tap the bishop and if he now plays this move i can now take it and I think rook h7 is good, but I actually maybe prefer this one to, to attack the queen. I, I can only play this now because the knight's there. That is nice. Nice. Thank you for the theory lesson there, Blair. So his only option after knight takes e4 is knight g6. But this ends up being okay for, for black, definitely. I remember looking at this line. Again, a bit complicated, but you can ask Blair about the course there if you if you want to learn this so the lot the, the last two courses that i've done are basically a lot of the positions have been on e4 e5 and i'm really happy that i'm starting to learn this one even though i'm 41 years old a grandmaster i i've never learned these interesting positions and the way i've gone about it is finding well with the help of blair with the help of richard panacea finding really unique ways of playing so even in a this line which is supposed to be boring finding ideas like h6 and g5 and I, I, I found that this has been very healthy for well it's been a lot of fun maybe not just healthy for uh, um maybe not just healthy to improve at chess but it's been loads of fun playing these kind of ideas so i've enjoyed it a lot so we need two out of two now to uh to get to eight out of eleven which would be a good score right eight out of eleven be a good score now i've maybe got i've got one white left I've got to make the Grandmaster Gambits crush it, right? Got to. Come on, Grandmaster Gambits. We're going to get in a crushing victory. And, and now I think I'm a little bit more... It's funny, because now I feel like I could play... If I started the tournament now, I'll be like, yes! But anyway, maybe it's just one nice win that does it too. It's funny how chess works, right? Uh, hmm. Okay, you might want to look at the scores. I don't know who Cuban is. I say only an IM. Um, uh, a lot of big names there. Ali Razor is one and a half points off. So we're only, we're only one and a half points off Ali Razor. You got, uh, uh, is that Nepo? I believe that's Nepo. Uh, loads of strong players. Hikaru is two points off. We're only a point off Hikaru, right? Uh, Peter Svidler, we're a point off Peter. Just point out some of the big names here and we are i think we're on six are we on six now so we're on the same group as arian tarry who just played in this is this is a strong group vidit has moved up a little bit he's another uh, and we caught krikor back up there and eric rosen we're right next to eric rosen there hello eric uh, is Shiroff Shiroff is Shiroff in here? Where, where where's Shiroff? Did we see his name? I'd love to play Shiroff. Oh, he is. He's on six and a half. He's got half a point more than us. The legendary Shiroff, one of my favourite players of all time. 
It's a strong tournament, right? It's a it's a strong tournament. It's a great it's a great little way to. I love practicing out my openings in this tournament. It's so so much fun. Um. So we got um yeah we've we've only got two rounds to go, and we are in now with Gatakamsky. And will the Grandmaster Gambits work against one of the best players at some point in the world? Gatakamsky was was an incredibly strong player. What was his high? What was the highest? Okay, we're going to go for Grandmaster Gambits. What was Gatakamsky's highest that he got to? We're going to go for the, this line. This is all in. This is all in the one above. We're going to castle here. It's all above. We're going to go rookie one. What was the highest that Gadakamski got to? We're following, we're following the course basically here, guys. Now this one is where you take here and play knight takes here. Blair recommends queen d7 in his course, and this is one of the more positional ways that black can play. But maybe white has some small advantage in in, in some of the positions because I'm going to double his pawns. So even though it's a grandmaster gambits DVD. A course not DVD obviously sometimes you have to go for slightly better positions but this is this is basically the max the max lang what, what was the highest Gadakamski got to two in the world anyone remember his highest placement I can't even remember what his highest placement was so you can see here he should have gone f5 which which Blair knows about but this position is actually very pleasant for me and the idea is to bring the rook here and we're playing it positionally. His pieces are tied up. We've got a, the openings worked again. This is in the course. I can remember this one well because this is one I, I, I saw Giri. Uh, Dubov played this against Giri just the other day. And this is one line where I can remember well. So uh, again, uh, it's been the opening been a success because we're probably very likely to win a pawn, right? But it doesn't mean I, 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 I won't mess it up. Now here, he's going to go rook here. I'm thinking about knight into d5. I'm a little bit worried about the bishop coming over here as well. But I don't think I need to worry. Slight advantage to White, just following the course against. Not he was number four in the world. This guy. Well, that's that's not bad. Now, can I just win that pawn without any fear? That's that's what I'm wondering, and I'm thinking I I, I might find out. <laughs> I'm probably going to find out, right? Could regret that one, but let's do it. Can we do this one? I might regret this. I might regret this. But I might not. Bishop e4, bishop takes, rook takes here, knight e7 check, king here, knight takes here, and I'm a pawn up, right? So I'm going this, this, check, king here, takes, bishop takes. And we are a pawn up in the ensuring ending. And again, the opening has worked its wonders. But that doesn't mean I'm going to convert against one of the best players in the world. But we can try, right? We're a pawn up. Opposite colour bishops, probably draw, but we can try. Thing is, when I'm playing these guys, I just outsight myself. You know, this is like the okay. So he wants to he wants to equalize by by doing this, right? Um, not sure. 
You just need, I think sometimes it really is just confidence. It, it is massive. Absolutely massive. finding the right plan to push here I might yeah oh, dear the nerves what is that move that's terrible playing like an absolute idiot didn't think my f4 move was very good and now I'm really f seeing why and uh, I've thrown away, thrown away any winning chances. That's for sure. With my very bad play. Should be able to hold this. So I'm not. I'm not too worried. I wonder what I should have done in that ending to keep pushing. I wonder what I should have done to keep pushing now. I'll oh, just have a draw, yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, I, I didn't make the best out of it. I think F4 was a, li a, little, a little bit too loose, right? It was a little bit too loose um, in, in the position. So I, I want to see, again, I think that might have been following this, this game Dubov and Ish Giri, which was played very recently. Um, but I was certainly, it, look, ah, oh dear, so I was winning. Whenever I, 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 I play all right against Ganakamsky, I played him a couple of times, um, but I, I really did not play that ending very well. I, I was just getting a little bit mind, mind whacked there, but it's still, Ganakamsky's a legend, right? Uh, he is, he is a total, he's a total legend. I know it's not easy to win, of course, it's not easy, but. Uh, it's the kind of positions that Magnus would, would win a lot, right? He would win a lot. So let's have a look. So the, the accuracy is quite high. Um, and there must have been a way I could uh, uh, um, push. I'm just looking at the comments. One more game to go. So I'm not going to get the score I wanted. But we can still get seven and a half. This guy was in the top five in the world. So he's he's obviously very, very experienced. Um and yeah, his most famous one was for his being his, his, his absolute legend comment, right? Um, and I think later on it was it was probably just a draw, but let's have a look. So um, interesting. So again, this opening is in the new course that I've brought out. And I think as you can see, if one of the top five players in the world gets a worse position and we're just winning risk-free, we've done our work for the course, right? And what I mean by that is, this is all in the course, and now against this one, you've got to decide what you take on e4 with. And rook takes e4 is correct, because after this simple move, yeah, okay, you might think it's not really um, like a grandmaster gambit thing, but you're just slightly better, because you take here, and this is still in the course, and after bishop f4, you're probably going to win a pawn, so you're getting a pawn up, so it's totally worked here. The computer gives it as an edge and we might even be following this game of Dubov. I'm not entirely sure. B3. And now if you can take a pawn, you take it. And this little tactic I had to see in advance because now after bishop e4, we go into this ending where I am a pawn up. But this is where I started flaffing about. And you can see the only move which is a mistake is this f4. And that's what I said. That's what I said. Um, we actually found an interesting idea against Blair's Queen D7, but Queen D7 is uh, is very, uh, very interesting. Um, very interesting. Not a bad idea at all. Very good idea. So how do you win this one? Well, I think what I did so far is okay. Because my bishop stops his rook coming in, and I need to now try and use these and activate my rook. So in hindsight, it looks so much easier. Now, I think my first move here is probably an error. I kind of like it on the C file instead, but rook d1 is not terrible. And now let's activate the rook. 
And if he goes here, I can get my rook behind that pawn. And he is, he's basically, he's probably just losing this one because he's going to lose the second pawn. So he had to defend with rook a8. And now this move is just horrendous. Such a bad move to play because I'm opening up his light square bishop. I mean, if you're going to move that pawn, put it on f3 because at least then you keep the bishop trapped out of the game. And then I can try moving the king in. But f4 is just a bad positional move. I was hoping to get ideas of f5, but they're never going to work. So this is the one position where I went wrong. And here I can play the stunning bishop a7. Whoa, look at that. <laughs> Amazing. That is the winning move, right? Amazing. If I'd have played that, I'm sure I, I would have got accused of being a computer, right? <laughs> oh, look at that, though. That is sexy as hell, right? And we're just trying to take that pawn. What a move, right? What a move. You can't take the bishop because we go there. What a move. What a move. Bishop a7. I mean, that is the kind of move that if you see and you're able to play it, you're, you're literally a, a, a fucking legend, right? <laughs> But if I don't play that move, do I have a more? Do I have a, a another way to play this? Okay, we're on to the last game. It's also thinking b4, but why can't we take there? I don't understand. Okay, so I had to find bishop. I had to find bishop a7 to win that one. Uh, okay, last game of the day, and uh, well, I'm playing a, a, an NM, but they can still play brilliantly. Let, let's let's not play the Dutch today. I play the Dutch all the time. Whatever happens, I'm over fifty percent. We're going to try to see if we can get... Uh, let's let's go for some crazy gambit. Let's try to finish on a high. This is the last round. Let's finish like the cowboy would. Psycho cowboy mode. Straight in. Dubious gambit. In we go. Let's have some fun. Dive into the position. And this is certainly a dubious gambit, by the way. But I, I, you have a lot of fun sometimes in these. Don't wreck it now. If I lose now, I, I'm, not, I'm not like... Uh, I'm not like overly worried if I lose now, but I'm, I'm not going to try and lose this game. This is this is the this is my little home. Well, not homemade variation, but I often play this, and it looks like I've got no compensation. But my idea is d6, bishop takes d6, bishop to one of these two squares, queen to f6, queen to e7, castles queenside, get the rook on the d file, and uh, you know, boom, 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 boom. That's what we're going for. All right, that's what we're trying to do. So, um, and you know, he's a little bit cramped here. So it's just like very easy to play. D6, bishop f5, bishop d6, move the queen. D6, here we go. Let's try it. Let's take with a bishop. And now maybe bishop f5, but I have to think about running into e4 there at some point. Am I worried about that? Here, I don't really want to allow this one. So do we put it on g4? Let's put it on g4. Just so I don't allow that one with tempo. I'm going to move my queen, castle queen side, and then bang, checkmate incoming. I'd love to play queen e7 now, but it's, is that complete crap? Takes check, king f1, takes king, takes bishop c5. Oh, I'd love to play that. Oh, can I? Can I? <laughs> can I go? Not, can I go queen e7? I don't think I can takes check king here takes take it's got to be crap okay I'm, i don't think we can uh, i'm trying i'm trying to sacrifice but we've already given up a pawn we don't need to lose the game i was thinking like here takes check here takes takes check when he can't go e3 because he gets mated so he has to come backwards but instead we'll stick with our other plan of going the opposite side to him which is going to lead i don't mind being a pawn down if we're opposite side castling uh, and i'm now going to play a5 i don't i don't want that one coming um now i feel it's time to castle right do i I'm, actually i'm going to put this knight in the center first i like that knight there let's put the knight in the center of the board I might also think about doing something over there potentially and I just want to get one more move in and then I then all my pieces developed and it's time to rock and roll 
uh, with that position, with, with that castling idea. Um, and this kind of position I, I've tried out a lot and, and it's just a lot of fun to play. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend, I wouldn't probably do a course on this and recommend it and try to make money selling this as a course because it, it's probably, well, it's not sound, but for a bit of fun, it's, it is a bit of fun. Okay, and we're getting some wildness here. Now, um, da, 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 da. this seems like a good move to me when he's going to take and go queen d4. This seems like a good move. Do I have to castle kingside? I might have to and keep. I think castling queenside there is too risky because he can take and take there. I think I have to try and keep this ideas. It's going to it's going to be it's a little bit less attractive when you castle kingside, but I still have nice pieces in the center and we still got these two guys to to aim for and I can now secure some pieces in the middle. So bishop here first move that strings to mind. Also a knight move somewhere knight here here queen here then he's got queen d5 okay let's let's just play that first let's just do that just so my knight is always secure If he takes here, well, I don't know. I don't know. Do I put my queen on d7 or f6? Probably f6. But then, queen d4 is interesting. Okay, so he's trying to he's trying to make some exchanges, and this is this is wise of him to do so. And he's he's playing this well so far, isn't he? I haven't got. I haven't managed to. But it's taken both of us a lot of time to navigate this. I haven't got an attack as of yet. But my pieces are still okay. This is still all right. Still have a lovely night and I still have the pressure. Don't want to lose that one, do I? Okay, we'll do that. complex still I mean okay uh, I'm probably worse here but it's kind of I mean it's gonna probably come to the clock as well right I say then I I, I struggle to make a move okay I'll take that so centralize Ah, time, bloody time. Sunday, bloody Sunday. Oh, shit. Ah, oh, my words. Ah, oh, no, Williams. In its increments, I'm not going to win time. Ah, oh, no. You idiot, Simon. You absolute idiot. Oh well. Oh well. One punt left. And I think my punt is well and truly over. Ah, oh, okay. He didn't even want to queen his his pieces. This increment's actually turning to be a bit annoying now because uh I may have been able to uh you can why is he not queening? Why is he not queening? He doesn't want to queen. Uh, it's pretty. Had I got one more move, it could have been 
stalemates. I don't think there's any stalemates here. I'm trying, but I think I'm actually going to get checkmated. Okay, there we go. A little bit of a punt at the end, but it, it yeah, he defended well there, and I just dropped that rook, didn't I? That was the biggest blunder of the day. Um, probably even around the end uh, until I just yeah drop well drop the knight there. That was crazy. I just just had a, a little mind blank. Uh, should be a draw here, really. Uh, probably I should give my king an escape square. Some, or oh, actually, I have this one, don't I? I can go knight takes g3, and uh, I'm pushing for a win when he's got three seconds left here, because uh, his king's very weak. So that that would have given me potentially winning chances. No chance when there's increment on the board or, or flagging as well. So uh, that 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 was the issue there. Okay, well, um, still some interesting games. Not not a particularly special or good performance, but uh, the openings seem to be working. Uh, at least at some consolation. Just the rest of my game was was pretty terrible at times. Uh, but I'm glad the Grandmaster Gambits was getting me good positions against top players. You know, world five top five players. I'm glad Blair's course, the last two courses I've done, got me a win in twelve moves. So. Uh, all in all, I think um, positives to take away and to work on. And again, if you want to support me, the course is there. There's a link in the chat. You can buy that course. It's on half price at the moment. It will make you a much more aggressive player. The whole point of the course was to give you an opening with one E4. So we start with one E4, but really to give you the most aggressive opening you could ever have that's sound with one e4 so it's the most aggressive opening that you could ever play and that's what this 27 hours of video will teach you which is a lot of video my biggest opening course but you know you can do it in little bits and you can learn it in little bits as you go along and once you learn it you're going to have a, a fantastic gambit repertoire so if you do want to support me please do consider buying that course it does help me a lot so uh anyway um Still could have done better, couldn't I? I always get, I'm very critical of my play. And uh, er, well done, Eric Hansen. Really, really, really happy to see Eric uh, coming in there and doing well. So uh, great to see Eric come in second. Well done, Eric. Uh, you, 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 that's that's good. I like Eric. I like the chess brass. Some of my favorite streamers, but there is one streamer I like more. And we're going to send you over there now. And I'll be streaming again at least on Saturday. I might do more this week for the Bum Ratty chess tournament. Uh, but for now, have a good night. I'll see you later and uh, enjoy yourselves.